the Aspire Sports Show. I'm Tyler, and I'm going to be bringing you my week eight buy and sell players here. So if you like this content, please like, subscribe, share with your friends. We'd really appreciate it. So I'm, I'm going to be talking about five buys and five sells. And maybe I don't get to some that you would like to hear, or maybe you're getting offered some trades and you just want to double check. Leave it in the comments below, and we'll answer any questions that you may have. Even starting sick questions, whatever it may be, whatever it may be, leave it in the comments below. So let's go ahead and get into the first buy here. My first buy is going to be Chase Claypool, and the reason why I say Chase Claypool, I said to sell on him uh, previous weeks because his value was just so high. And Deontay Johnson coming back, I figured he'd be involved. Um, he had a 30% target share the first two weeks with Chase Claypool there, but Chase Claypool saw Malcolm Butler in shadow coverage. I don't think that's going to be how it it's going to be every single week. It, I don't think he's going to see shadow coverage. I think uh, you're going to kind of have to pick your poison with Deontay Johnson, Juju, Chase Claypool out there. Uh, he did outsnap James Washington by a lot, so he's the guy in these two wide receiver sets. Um, three wide receiver sets, he's going to be the guy in this offense. So I think much better days are ahead. We saw Deontay Johnson even get hurt at, at the end of the game. I don't think he misses time, but he, he did come back in. Um, but this is somebody who already three times this season has been hurt. So me personally, I would go out and buy him. I think the price tag right now is pretty low. So 100%, we've already seen the ceiling. So go out and buy. Next person is going to be David Montgomery. And I think that you're going to have a lot of owners. A lot of people are impatient in fantasy, right? You'll see people get dropped. You'll see people give up on players. I think that owners are starting to really give up on him because of his previous games. They've been against, honestly, some pretty tough defenses. Now, the Carolina, uh, that wasn't a tough defense. It just wasn't a good, good showcasing from him and really the Bears offense. He's not been efficient, but his touches since Tariq Cohen has gone hurt. These have these have been his touches. So 13, 17, 23, and 19. So he's seeing plenty of opportunity. That's honestly like bell cow um, touches there, the opportunity. So if this offense starts to get a little bit of rhythm and the efficiency picks up a lot, or not a lot, even just a little bit, like, honestly, this is our back-end RB1 potential with him. Now, yes, it's a lot of if, if this offense can get going. But if they do, this is somebody that I would absolutely love to have on my roster. And I think you can get him for pretty cheap. So I would 100% go out and buy him. Next person is DeAndre Swift. You see a lot of analysts on ESPN, analysts, ESPN, uh, Yahoo, NFL, they all say, oh, sell high, sell high on DeAndre Swift. Why would you want to sell high? If you want to sell high, yes, please, I'll take him. Uh, they said last week that they wanted to get more involved. He saw the most running back snaps, most running back touches. Now, obviously, there's still going to be AP and Carrion Johnson are going to be involved. But Adrian Peterson right now is rated, graded the worst running back by Pro Football Focus. Worst. So do we think that he's going to get better? At age 35, as the season progresses, me personally, no. I think Swift gives them the best opportunity to win, and I believe that he's going to be more involved as the season progresses and honestly has, like, top 15 potential. I, I truly believe that. So I think you could get him for much cheaper than that. So 100%, I would go out and try to buy. Next person here would be Terry McLaurin. Terry McLaurin, I think, is kind of undervalued because he plays on Washington, right? You have Kyle Allen throwing the ball. It's not the best, but he honestly has been pretty good with Kyle Allen throwing the ball. Um, he goes, He's on a buy this week, so you're going to have this opportunity to buy him, especially if the team needs to win. So I think the price tag is going to be at its lowest this week. So I would 100% try to go out and buy him and you'll you'll thank me later. Believe me, you'll thank me later. So go out and try to buy him. Next person here is going to be Daryl Henderson. Yes, I said to buy uh, Cam Akers. Um, I don't believe that anymore. Unless, I, I mean, I think Cam Akers is a good, like, bench stash in the last spot. Just because, say one of these backs get hurts, it gets hurt, he kind of gets thrusted into that spot. And I just think that Sean McVay is really smart in terms of his scheme and everything. But Daryl Henderson, man, he looked really good. He looked powerful. 
he looked honestly like the way he moved on the screen was fast like he looked fast he looked explosive so me personally 100 percent, i would try to go out and buy him and i think that the price tag is going to be a little bit lower than what the value is here he's seen the third most red zone touches of any running back in the nfl this year i don't know if people knew that but i think he there's a lot of opportunity here and you could get him for cheaper than what i think he's he should be valued at so let's go ahead into the cells obviously this is a pretty obvious one i think a lot of people kind of say sell on him but i think that some people right now i've seen some people kind of buy low like this is the last opportunity you'll have to sell mike evans some people out there might say oh chris godwin's out he has a good matchup against the giants he's going to see cover shadow coverage from james bradbury james bradbury i think that mike evans could definitely win this uh, battle but i don't think that tom brady's going to need to have Mike Evans to have a good game. Scotty Miller has probably the best matchup uh, for the Bucks this week, and I think Tom Brady is going to go there a lot. I also think that they'll be able to run the ball effectively. So me personally, this is your last chance, and all, obviously all these are my personal opinions, but these are this is your last chance to sell Mike Evans on just his name alone and the opportunity here with Chris Godwin being out, I would 100% sell Mike Evans. Next person here. And it pains me to say this. Honestly, it does. Uh, Antonio Gibson. Who do you think led the backfield in snaps this previous week? Do you think he did or J.D. McKissick? Because if you said Antonio Gibson, you're wrong. It was it was J.D. McKissick. Uh, I mean, can you believe that? He still out-snapped Antonio Gibson. He played the worst, probably the worst team he's going to play all season in terms of rush defense. So 100% try to sell. And I hate to say it, but he's just not seeing the snaps that he needs to see to be kind of considered where he's at. I feel like some people, especially after this week, kind of consider him RB2 moving forward. I think he's lower than that. He's just not seeing the opportunity, so I would try to sell. Next person is Le'Veon Bell. Oh, Le'Veon Bell looks so good in his six touches. Yeah, he did in snowy weather, right? He looked really good. And some people, I think, honestly think he could be like an RB1. So try to find those people that think he's going to be that because I don't think so. The only way he is if there's an injury to uh, Clyde edwards helaire So if you kind of want to hold on to this lottery ticket, I guess, in hopes that Clyde gets hurt or something, then sure. But I honestly think that you could sell him right now to somebody that kind of views this situation as an RB1. Like the potential is there. So I would try to look for that person in your league and 100% sell. Next person is going to be Todd Gurley. Now this one, I'm kind of indifferent about, but I've been kind of talking myself into it. Todd Gurley right now is second in the league in red zone touches, which you love to see from a running back. Um, He's seeing, you know, a decent amount of carries. The past two weeks has seen at least 20 carries. Um, at least 23 opportunities. So he's seeing plenty of opportunities in this game, in these games, but he's also averaging 2.5 yards per carry the past two weeks against a couple run defenses that aren't very good. Now he's going to go into the stretch where they're going to play better, like pretty good teams here. Um, This past defense is terrible. I said it a lot. So I'd imagine that they're not going to be playing from the, the, they're not going to have the lead in these games. They're going to be playing from behind, which means less opportunities. That's just my personal take on it. I think right now would be a really good chance to sell on him, and I think that you could get pretty decent value in return. And the last person here, and I already, I already can hear the boos, right? I got booed for Dalvin Cook, which didn't turn out too bad. I got booed for DK Metcalf, not too bad. Booed for Derrick Henry. Uh, we'll, we'll see. But, like, you sell players that are at their ultimate peak. Right now, he is at the ultimate peak that he'll be at all season long. And sometimes people just love to chase points. So you find that person that loves to chase points because I think that they're going to value him at a much, probably honestly, like a top five wide receiver. But he's not. He's probably like a back end wide receiver one, honestly. Very high upside wide receiver two. So try to find him, try to find that owner that manager that is going to value him at that price range because they some owners will honestly sell the house so try to find that person and sell him with that being said thank you so much for watching make sure you hit that like subscribe share button we really appreciate it thank you and have a wonderful day